Abhishek. And uh, today we are going to discuss importance of OR2 in a current web uh, scenario and how I implemented OR2 standards in Drupal as a part of my Google Summer of Code project last year in 2017. So a little about me. I am currently a 19-year-old student uh, studying uh, computer science engineering from RTU. It, is a, it stands for uh, Rajasthan Technical University in India. I've been coding since the, uh, since the age of 10. I love to play all the racket sports like squash, badminton, and uh, like ping pong, which are, is like popular in like North, uh, South, Eastern countries. And I've been involved with open source for the last five years. Uh, so like when I was 12, I created a plugin for WordPress as a part of like my personal project. Uh, I was not able to find a particular functionality in WordPress, then I created it and open sourced it. And currently, I'm, uh, I'm running my own startup called Roots, which uh, converts underutilized spaces into uh, and turning them into co-working spaces. So like creating uh, neighborhood co-working spaces in India. So uh, before 2007, whenever you have to give an uh, access to, uh, of your account to an app, you have to simply enter your password and email which is like really scary because you need to uh, you are actually giving away your identity to them so uh, like we were always told to uh, in our childhood to ne never share our identity with uh, any stranger but we are doing the same uh, with the with in the, in the case of apps we are uh, we are giving our uh, app, uh, apps our access to our accounts which is not good totally not good uh, problems before OAuth was you were giving away apps your uh, password, apps were getting complete access uh, to your account, and uh, you can't disable the app to user account. Like you can't revoke uh, the access to your account at any point of time. So also like you can't change what what, should, uh, what an app can do with your account. Like for example, in Facebook, there is uh, app can access uh, uh, your friend list. Uh, can post on your behalf, but you can't change the permissions which uh, that app can use. Uh, before 2008, there were like uh, no open standards uh, out there uh, for authorization. You have to like uh, there were like some systems created by Google and Facebook. Like Facebook used MD5 uh, related some system, but there was no open uh, like uh, common standards. So if you have to implement your own authorization system, it was a tedious task. Yeah, it required a lot of planning and uh, execution of uh, things and like uh, then testing it out again and again. Uh, also like uh, even for developers to integrate like uh, these uh, into their website, it was not easy task. You, there was no, no like a uh, common library to create servers or like even implement other uh, authorization uh, in uh, their websites. So it was not at all easy to implement. So why we needed OAuth? Uh, before OAuth, uh, there was uh, uh, okay. So, like, I'm talking about the next day. Open standard uh, supported. Uh, so, what OAuth uh, did was it was an open standard. It is an open standard and supported by major, uh, like, major companies and organizations out there. Provides limited third-party access. So, apps don't get full access to your account. You can choose which uh, permissions and uh, which task an app can do on your behalf. It is easily implementable. Like uh, anyone with basic coding skills can go out there and implement uh, an OAuth integration into their website. Uh, access to uh, the app or the website is provided only uh, when it has been reviewed by the user. So whenever you go to like uh, Facebook uh, and click on sign up with Facebook, uh, you see what access, like what type of actions uh, uh, the app can perform on your behalf. So this was it. There are, uh, there are like three major components in OAuth. One is resource owner, other one is resource server and authorization ser uh, server, and uh, last one is client. So client and app are the same thing. Uh, let's assume like a uh, app is a Drupal website because I'm from Drupal. Uh, first of all, a request is sent from Drupal website, uh, authorization request is sent from Drupal website to the resource uh, like owner. Then if you allow that, uh, like if user allows that uh, app to uh, use their account, uh, in return they get an authorization code, which the website can use uh, uh, 
the authorization code to get access token in the return. And you can, uh, finally, you can use that access token to perform actions. Uh, and like these are the basic, uh, three basic major components. So how does it all work? So we'll be discussing about just uh, server-side implementation of OAuth. Uh, in, uh, so in get request, we usually define three and four parameters, uh, which are uh, client ID or app, identity, uh, app ID, which is uh, just to identify which app uh, is like uh, using, will be getting permission. Redact URL, uh, like URL, which is where after you authorize that app, where will the user be uh, redirected? And state parameters, it is basically to prevent CSRF attacks. Mm -hmm. So like the same thing, client ID, uh, ID, uh, ID is identification number for the app uh, to be used inside and provided by the social network. So you can't decide it on your own. Like if you go to Facebook, they will give you an app ID. Uh, redirect URI. You have to actually define redirect URI in both your get request and in the app settings page in like various uh, social networks. So for example, it is just to validate uh, the user will be getting redirect to a proper valid, a valid uh, URL of your website, not uh, getting like hacked in the middle. Uh, so like uh, in Facebook, there is like valid redirect URI, you can define it there. State, so this is the important part. In the whole authorization process, sometimes hackers can get involved and uh, get, get access to your data. So what you want to do is in, uh, implement a implement a token or a string which you can later identify or validate if uh, if, if like only user has uh, granted you access so like uh, in the middle no uh, hacker can uh, get the access it is basically to pro uh, prevent the cross cross site forgery you uh, you must pass and code at the starting and can validate it later. and then store it in this session variable and then validate it later so also like you have to define scopes which is our like list of permissions uh, which you want to get from the user. Uh, in case of Facebook, it can be name, your birthday, your friend list, uh, permission to post on your behalf, and like various other things like your uh, what do you read, like your movies, uh, movies you watch, etc., etc. Uh, so like all of us are familiar with this. Uh, whenever you click on that link, you uh, get redirected to Facebook. So Facebook asks if you want to like provide. Uh, your, like scopes, like scope or like uh, various data, like your profile information, email address, and other things, uh, to that app. If you continue, uh, then uh, you are redirected. Uh, then the app get authorization code, or and if you don't uh, authorize that app, then an error is sent to the app. Uh, also, then authorization code can be used to uh, get the access token in return by the authorization server. Uh, it allows uh, an app to perform actions on your behalf. Sometimes there are two types of uh, access token, short-lived access token and long-lived access token. So short-lived access token has to be refreshed again and again by the app, so it has some valid, valid uh, time frame amount. So for example, an access token in case of uh, Twitter is valid for six months. So you have to, uh, again refresh it uh, after some period of time with the help of re refresh token. Uh, now talking about Drupal. Uh, Drupal is content manage uh, management system which was started at the starting of web uh, like in 2000 by Dries uh, Brutite. Uh, it is written in PHP. Uh, earlier it was written in like plain PHP and then we have shifted to, uh, we are using Symfony as a, our core. More than like one million members are there. It is used by Tesla, General Electric and like various top corporations out there. Uh, we have been participating in Google's Summer of Code from 2005. So like this was this will be our like 13th edition. Uh, apart from that, like there have been various GSOC alumni, Google Summer of Code alumni, uh, who grew from a, like GSOC student to one of the top positions in Drupal, who are like managing all the uh, managing uh, the code and doing all the code reviews and all. Also, sadly. Uh, before Trump, White House government was uh, using uh, CMS, but after that they have changed to WordPress. So, like one more reason to hit, hit Trump for us. Uh, now, talking about social uh, initiative, this was my project. Uh, what social initiative does is 
it is harmonizing social networking functionality in Drupal. So also like uh, also providing like, creating like abstract functionalities of social provider uh, and uh, provide easy site integration. More than uh, there are like 20 plus social network out there with us. Uh, it is developed uh, basically in two GSOC editions. So like uh, before the GSOC 2016, we were nothing. It was just an idea, and it was plainly developed in 2016 and 2017. Started by Valentin. Uh, there are like three major components of social API: social auth, social post, uh, post, and social widgets. Uh, so, so, what social auth is? Uh, it is just related to authorization. Uh, social port, uh, post does is it automatically post on the hooks. Like, like a post is created. Uh, it uh, automatically uh, create uh, your new status on Facebook or like uh, send us message on Slack, uh, uh, defining that you have created a new uh, post. Basic underlying architecture of social API, what is it is now? It was created by Valentin in 2016, and uh, like social or Twitter, uh, which was uh, like our one of the our, our social auth implementers was created by my brother as a part of GCI 2016, and he was selected as grand prize winner after that. Uh, in GSOC 2017, what we did was integrated our League O2 library in a student initiative project. We factored the authentication process to make it more seamless, more uh, uh, fast, and like easily uh, extended across various social networks. Uh, added 20 plus social auth implementers, uh, which were included uh, GitHub, Instagram, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, added three social post implementers: social post LinkedIn, social post uh, Slack. Created AppSec method for social auth and social post implementers in social API. Encrypted the, the access token. So earlier, the access token was uh, stored uh, blankly in the database. After that, we have encrypted it. So like, if site gets hacked by anyhow, uh, your still the uh, access to your account will be protected. Uh, and uh, we are now also providing an access token to like third party modules which they can use to perform actions on your behalf uh, uh, in gci 2017 social auth amazon and social auth uh, right were created uh, by kifa miran they updated the documentation and uh, students are now the active maintainer uh, and part of the project also we have a, a new logo uh, for social initiative which was created as part of google coding uh, this year. Uh, now talking about the project, my, I was mentored by Valentin and Daniel Harris. Daniel Harris was the guy who came up with this social initiative project. Uh, so at the starting of the project, uh, uh, in GSOC, like there are three major uh, timelines, uh, which have to three major timelines or the milestones which you have to comply with. Uh, so what I did was in community period uh, is I understand uh, I understand the basic understanding of Drupal and how various social uh, OAuth in uh, social networks works. And then in phase one, uh, I implemented the league library in uh, social auth and social post. Uh, refactored the whole authentication process, which, will, uh, which we will see in later in this slide. Uh, in phase two, I did like more implementers, uh, social auth, GitHub, Instagram, to the, uh, our whole project. I wrote documentation and uh, created base implementers, which anyone can go and extend and uh, like create implementer for their own providers. Or if, for example, like if you have WeChat in China, then you can go and create uh, for uh, implementer for that. Apart from this, we uh, our uh, weekly meetings uh, was conducted by our GSOC administrator uh, Matthew Lecklader, uh, who was very helpful helpful in the whole uh, GSOC to me. Uh, apart from that, Drupal at core uses Symfony, and uh, there is like API above that uh, which Drupal core uh, provides to the modules and themes. So social auth, uh, social API was created on top of it, uh, uh, on top of Drupal core. And then social API extends social auth and social post, which uh, utilizes uh, the league or two base library, and you can integrate uh, your own third party uh, implementers and like generic uh, libraries there to create your own implementers and other standards like open id etc are also there open id uh, let it be open id and hop so they are there uh, they, uh, one of the reason to choose a, 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 what to client library the league library was it is actively maintained 
provide common abstract matter for different social networks. Large list of official supported and uh, third party uh, social network providers are there. And uh, it makes social e prep project more easy to manage and de uh, develop further. So authentication flow in social API is if a user is logged in, then uh, we add uh, that account to link that uh, social provider to the account of the user. If he's not logged in, then email address is obtained from social network. If like uh, a social network provides an email address, then the, uh, we check for the record of the user. If like uh, all, uh, record already, like that email address already exists in the database, we link that, uh, you, that account social network account to that user. Else, if, uh, if email already exists, then uh, we, have associate, we associate the email account. Else, uh, if like in case of some social networks, they don't provide email address. So what we uh, do is we ask uh, user to fill other details like email and other required details, and then he can complete his sign up or login. So what next for uh, our project? Uh, one of the major tasks is adding more and more implementers. So like uh, for every uh, social network out there which supports OAuth 2, we want to add it in our list. Adding functionality like reordering the uh, social network in our block icons and uh, creating uh, command line tool uh, with which you can create your own implementer in like five minutes and add support for generic OAuth 2 applications. So this is from my side, like if you have any questions and like these are the links to, uh, to the project. If you want to see and like create your own Drupal website and add this functionality, you can go there and find this. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Awesome. So thanks very much. Yeah. Um, we have a little time for questions. If anyone has a question. Oh. I have a question for yeah. you. Um, how did you find working against the Drupal APIs in eight versus seven? Okay, so uh, there were like uh, there was already a project in Drupal seven, uh, uh, which was based on hybrid auth, but we wanted to create uh, port it into like uh, uh, Drupal eight. But uh, hybrid auth is depreciated and like no more contribution are being made to the project to so to support like uh, the ongoing implementers, uh, ongoing social providers and different social providers. We have to like move on to the uh, the league library in the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so the next session in here is...